Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Howdy Partner. Um, we were off for a week, but now it sounds like we're back. Uh, my name is Young, and I'm a Partner Solutions Architect here at AWS. And you may be asking yourself, what are we doing here? What is this show about? Uh, just want to give you a heads up for any new audience uh, here on Twitch today. Uh, Howdy Partner is a show where we talk about our partners. Uh, so AWS provides a lot of services and tools to build on the cloud. And we have our partners that you know take our tools and services and create some cool solutions for other customers. So we have a lot of partners that we work with, uh, one of which you will hear from today. And Howdy Partner is basically a platform where we, we want to showcase the cool things they're building and great things they're, they're showing to the rest of the world. So with me uh, is Olivier, also from AWS. Olivier, do you want to do a short introduction? Sure. Thanks, Jung. Hi, everybody. Thanks a lot for your uh, interest today. Thanks for, for being there connected. So uh, I'm Olivier from AWS. I'm a solution architect only for machine learning. Uh, and currently streaming from uh, uh, the Paris area in France and based based in France as well. Sounds good. Yeah, so expect us to have a, a international, I guess, global audience today. And with us is Jeff and Philip. They are from Hugging Face. And obviously we'll be talking a little bit about Hugging Face towards uh, the second part of the show. Uh, but before we do anything, uh, Jeff and Philip, you want to say a few words for the audience today? I'll, I'll start it. Um, hi, guys. I'm Jeff Boudier. Uh, thanks so much, Young, for, uh, for inviting us to the show. Um, howdy, everyone. Uh, I'm in the product team at Hugging Face, usually on the west coast uh, of the United States, San Francisco, but uh, today in the west coast of France, um, out in Brittany. Uh, happy to join you guys and tell you all about what we're doing uh, at Hugging Face and with uh, AWS SageMaker. And hi from me too. I'm Philip. I'm from Germany and machine learning engineer and tech lead at Hugging Face. And I'm sending from Nuremberg, Germany today. Sounds good. Thanks, thanks guys for joining today. And I guess today's sort of topic we have on hand is Hugging Face has been of partners of, of ours for quite a while and we've done a lot of cool integrations together and one of the newest integrations that we have with hugging face uh i believe it was publicly announced last week uh, correct me if i'm wrong uh is the newest dlc deploy model so before we jump into that maybe olivia you can give us a little bit of a overview on on SageMaker and and how things work with uh, something like Hugging Face. Yes, absolutely, absolutely. So I'm going to to share my my uh, my screen for five five six minutes to give you an overview of of uh, our features for ML, uh, what SageMaker is, and why uh, Hugging Face on SageMaker is such a such a great idea. Uh, while we get the screen set up, uh, there is already a question for for the folks here at Hugging Face. Where in the world did you get the name Hugging Face? What, what's the the origin behind this? Maybe you can. Um, AI and machine learning uh, friendly and accessible. Uh, so how about uh, an, for an emoji uh, as a, as a company name? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, out of all the emojis, that's the one that sort of represents um, represents the, what we're trying to do with the community, making the latest state of the art uh, machine learning accessible to as many people as possible. Um, so yeah, hugging face stuck. I didn't I didn't know that actually was called hugging face. I, I guess a lot of emojis out there we don't really know what it's called. So <laughs> I have already learned something, if anything, and. Uh, for those of you uh, uh, watching our stream, if you have any questions, uh, questions like that, obviously other technical questions, just leave them on the chat and we'll, we'll help those get answered. So that said, uh, take it away, Olivier. Thanks, Alan. 
Yeah, so so basically, um, to to begin with, um, um, I really wanted to emphasize that our, our goal at AWS is to make uh, ML accessible to uh, to everyone, you know, every organization, every developer, uh, no matter their scientific skills. Um, so we have what we call the the three layer offer. So the first layer is services where the science is managed, uh, and where most of the infrastructure is managed as well. We call them AI services. And those services, they cover you know, a vast array of uh, ML paradigm, uh, vision, speech, text, uh, uh, search, um, NLP as well. Um, and also a uh, few more vertical use cases like recommenders or forecasting. Uh, and basically those services, they do not require you to have any scientific skills uh, because um, AWS uh, provides the models. Some of them are even pre-trained. Uh, and for some of them, you still need to provide your data to create custom models. And today we're not going to talk much more about those, but basically this is one one type of ML uh, capacity uh, we provide via our cloud platform. Uh, at the very bottom of the stack, we have much lower level services, uh, the raw infrastructure uh, and framework contributions. And this is basically low level primitives for advanced organizations and skilled developers and scientists that really want to build uh, and manage new infrastructure themselves. Uh, and this layer is also very interesting uh, because you have very advanced infrastructure, uh, including you know um, NVIDIA GPU equipped instances in EC2, Elastic Compute Cloud. So we have instances equipped with the latest NVIDIA cards like the A100 on the P4, but also uh, the T4 uh, on the G4 instance. Uh, we also have uh, our own uh, hardware actually, uh, in, including you know the for example the the inferential chip that comes with the um, with a physical matrix multiply uh, based chip to accelerate uh, deep learning inference. Um, and in the middle, we have, you know, SageMaker, which is the best of both worlds and uh, which will be, you know, the, the focus uh, of, the, of the session tonight. And SageMaker uh, is basically an ecosystem of APIs to orchestrate and manage uh, custom uh, model development from annotation up to deployment, monitoring, retraining, bias analysis. Uh, and including, you know, uh, development, training, tuning, uh, and it's fully framework and model agnostic. Uh, you bring your own code, your own models. Uh, you can use, you know, various paradigm, uh, either, you know, your own Docker uh, or your own Python script. So it's very flexible. And basically it provides managed infrastructure, but full freedom on the science. And this will be uh, the, um, basically the, 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 the goal of the talk today. Uh, in SageMaker, you have five types of algorithm that you can develop. So some of them we still help on and we still provide the science. So typically the most managed option is Autopilot, which is our fully managed O2ML um, that, that basically learns um, uh, advanced new models uh, from, from tabular data. Uh, we also have implementations um, that we will vote for 18 algorithm. And, and those algorithms are pretty famous and popular. Things like Exeboost, linear models, k clustering, but they've been rewritten from scratch to be very efficient and scalable. Uh, and today, what we want to emphasize uh, for this session with Hugging Face is, you know, custom algorithm when you provide your own code. And for this, we have two options. Um, we created uh, and we keep, you know, developing uh, our own uh, Docker containers for a number of frameworks. And so we have um, a number of containers uh, that AWS manages and, and associated SDKs. Uh, that lets you just bring some Python uh, for those frameworks, um, and this you know we will we will go go deeper on uh, because this is the type of integration we are working on with with Hugging Face. Uh, alternatively, you know if you still want to control everything, including the Docker the Docker registry, you can also of course bring your own Docker uh, image, and we also have a marketplace of algorithm and train models that you can use uh, as well. Uh, so now let's dip in the framework containers. So as I said, we have a number of, um, of frameworks uh, integrated for which we created images uh, for training, deployments, and also associated uh, clients for orchestration. So that includes uh, scikit-learn, uh, Exeboost, IMXnet, uh, TensorFlow, PyTorch, and you know, the big news of 2021 uh, is that uh, we, uh, we worked uh, with Hugging Face to support uh, their libraries and to bring you know uh, containers for hugging face uh, which is definitely you know the most popular option for NLP today uh, and so to give you um, an insight and, and, and to, to showcase the value uh, of this uh, of this de development paradigm let me spend uh, a minute uh, 
on, on the whiteboard and show you, you know, the, the typical workflow uh, in data science and how we, we, we can scale it and make it cost efficient with, uh, with this type of, of APIs. So basically it all starts you know, with, uh, with uh, developers uh, that has uh, you know, local compute available. So I'm going to call it uh, an IDE uh, and it could be you no know, local laptop. It could be a big machine in the cloud, but basically we have this local compute capacity uh, and, and the typical workflow, you know, is for developers and scientists to, to work iteratively, interactively uh, on this local compute, uh, developing code, training models, and, you know, kind of babysitting uh, a script or a Docker image to, to get a better and better model. And this, this works you know, fine because, I mean, wh when you're alone, because you can iterate fast, uh, you have, you know, feedback uh, almost instantly. Uh, you can, you know, check logs, you can monitor things, but it's not, you know, very scalable. Uh, it's tough to collaborate with people when you work locally only as well. So the, the proposal of SageMaker, one of the features we have, uh, and one of the features we're going to highlight with the, with the Hugging Face integration, is to be able to run remote compute and dedicated training job. And so typically, uh, I have, you know, this local script, could be Docker, could be Python, uh, and uh, one API in SageMaker, the SageMaker training API, lets you launch remote tasks um, to train models. So this is the you know, first first big, uh, big change is now you can run those tasks uh, remotely on FMA role, dedicated machines, dedicated VMs in EC2 managed by SageMaker. Um, they are FMA role, they live only for the duration of the job and you pay per second. So it's very cost effective. You could actually spend you know, a month or weeks on deep learning project, but if your training task uh, that use GPU take only a you know, couple minutes, couple dozen minutes, you could actually pay just a few dollars per month. So this is very cost effective. First advantage of this, you know, new paradigm that we propose in SageMaker is that it's 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 cost effective because it's ephemeral. Because as well, it supports spot capacity, which is you know a new capacity available at a discount. Very nice feature of EC2 that we can we can use we can leverage in a managed fashion in SageMaker. Uh, another benefit of this API is that the I/O. Uh, with S3 is managed. So S3 you know, is object storage in AWS, very useful in machine learning and data science because it's cheap, it's elastic, it comes with many primitives for security and administration. And typically SageMaker integrates very nicely with S3. So in S3, uh, you could have data set, you could have checkpoints and um, in just one config, uh, one, 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 one line, you know, in your, uh, your training uh, command, you say which which S3 path you want to import to your training instance, and this I/O will be managed by SageMaker. Copy will be automatic, either you know in a stream or it could also be just a, a copy. Uh, same thing on the way back. If you want to save a model, if you want to save checkpoints, just say say a path, and you know the, the the service will do it for you. So very nice feature, manage I/O. Uh, other benefit of this paradigm of you know going remote and not working locally is that now you can use distributed uh, clusters. So SageMaker works well. And we're going to see that one, one nice feature of Hugging Face, uh, and in particular of the, the development of the trainer class in Hugging Face, is that you can seamlessly distribute training uh, in a model parallel or data parallel over multiple instances. So this is a very nice feature for scale within job. Uh, other benefits you know, of this paradigm where you have one job, uh, one cluster uh, per training task that you have good scaling across job as well, because things are asynchronous. So you can launch you know, many, many machines and they won't have contention uh, among themselves. Could have different dependencies. Uh, so very nice, a very nice benefit. And also a nice, nice one when you're a team, when you do production uh, is uh, the metadata management. Uh, and this is also, you know, when you work locally on your own laptop or on your own machine with SSH, you know, it, it's tough to do because you need to persist metadata, you need to persist models, you need to persist metrics. So you need to have a dedicated server that will stay up that you can, you know, uh, broadcast to the rest of the team with metadata, with results, with models. Uh, and with SageMaker, this is all native. No matter, you know, the framework you're using, could be scikit-learn, PyTorch, R, you know, as long as you fit within this Docker-based spec, as you respect the contract, your metadata, data path, model results, uh, model path, uh, hyperparameters, all this will be persisted in the serverless Metastore. And this is very convenient where you work as a team, when you need to iterate and collaborate and document your work. And we will see that, you know, with Hugging Face, this really makes the NLP uh, iteration experience pleasant and productive. Um, and we have the same thing for inference as well. Uh, and inference, you know, could be batch or could be real time. 
uh, for NLP, especially in use case like search, uh, like you know chatbots, it's very important you know to have uh, dynamic, very fast feedback. So we're going to emphasize real-time inference here. But SageMaker has many capacities for for inference. But typically for inference as well, instead of you know having a big central server with all your models in SageMaker, we propose that you instantiate you know a dedicated endpoint with its own a fleet of EC2 machines that you choose. Could be GPU, could be CPU, could be one, could be many machines. Um, and with a saving stack for a REST endpoint. And this is very nice in SageMaker and in this, you know, framework mode development um, development experience, including in that hugging face experience, because we provide the server stack actually. And this is something that we found, you know, ML practitioners, scientists sometimes have a hard time with, you know, creating a server, handling contention, handling concurrency. Should I use Flask, Django, something else? And we actually, uh, we integrated with many uh, state-of-the-art deep learning servers, including TF Serving, including TorchServe, including MMS. Um, and, and, and we use those to create relevant server stacks for the right uh, for deep learning frameworks. Uh, and we're going to see that, you know, with Hugging Face in particular, a lot of effort has been done and we collaborated um, with Hugging Face to make, you know, a, a good saving stack that you can use uh, with sometimes actually zero code on your own, just, you know, train model. And, and same thing here, you no know, good integration native with S3 model once trained is read by the endpoint, could come from S3, could also come from the model hub. This is big news. Uh, and you have, again, a lot of benefits compared to, to, to local or to centralized uh, work. Uh, typically, this could be configured with auto scaling. You could also uh, have, you also have a lot of, lot of logs and monitoring going, um, going, to, um, going to CloudWatch. Uh, could be accelerated endpoint. Uh, and very nice thing is also um, that uh, you have all the metadata that goes into Metastore. So things are well documented, well instrumented. So just a subset, you know, uh, of the SageMaker features, but this really is the core, uh, having, you know, the right API for the right job. Uh, and this again, available for a variety of, of, of model of, of development experience could be with your own code, your own Docker file, your own Python, or our own implementation, our own building algorithm. And typically this paradigm, when you, when you pair it, you know, with the power, the scientific depth, of something like Hugging Face, it really makes team productive, uh, cost efficient, and, and their work super super scalable. So uh, with that with that said, I'm going to uh, to transfer uh, the uh, the rest of the talk uh, to my my uh, my friend at Hugging Face. Thanks so much, Olivier. Such a great overview. Um, with uh, with SageMaker, our customers really have like the most complete platform to do their data science and machine learning work. So being able to do that and benefit from all the state of the art models um, that we host is uh, is really, really a, a powerful combination. Um, and, uh, you know, before before we jumped into the uh, the nitty gritty, um, I wanted to start by telling you some stories. Uh, young at the start, uh, you ask, why are we here? So let me tell you how we got here. Uh, here being the, the the now, where all the work that we've been doing uh, with uh, the AWS team allows SageMaker customers to train any of the uh, 10,000 plus uh, state-of-the-art transformer models uh, that Hugging Face hosts, um, train them on their own data uh, in a very easy, controlled uh, way, um, and then deploy any of those models or the models that they train um, super easily to get scalable enterprise ready um, endpoints um, with all the compliance and all the the, the native features that uh, SageMaker provides around it. So um, to tell you a story, let me jump to screen sharing. I'm going to share my whole screen and I'm going to jump there. I assume this is all good and you can see it. Otherwise, please let me know. Uh, so how did we get here? Back before uh, NLP, natural language processing uh, was cool, uh, we decided at Hugging Face to really focus our company's effort um, on NLP. And, and the reason for that is that we were convinced very early on um, that uh, NLP was going to be uh, the most transformative uh, uh, technology of the decade. And the reason for that is that when you think about it, 
uh, most of our day is spent in a natural language. Um, when you look at companies, entire departments of companies can be thought as uh, NLP uh, components, taking text as input, uh, outputting text. That's true of customer service. That's true of marketing departments. Um, so if we're able to increase the productivity um, uh, through, uh, of uh, processing text, text uh, then we're really improving the productivity uh, of businesses and um, and uh, and of humanity, really. So text is the API for humans. That's why we're here. Um, and the, the 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 what really changed the game um, is, uh, of course, the Transformers uh, architecture. And telling the story of Hugging Face is really telling the story of the Transformers uh, architecture. And um, the crucial innovation that came through uh, this, um, and um, here in the background you may not see, but I'm referring to the attentions all you need seminal paper by Vaswini and all from Google, uh, is the notion of transfer learning. That means that um, before, when you had a new business problem to solve, you had to collect a whole bunch of data and train a whole new model all from scratch. Um, and whenever the problem would change a little bit whenever the domain or the language would change a little bit, then you would have to start a whole process all over again. And with transfer learning, you can now leverage the accumulated knowledge from pre-trained models, these large language models, um, so that you can adapt them uh, in a very cost-effective way to a new task or to a new domain, uh, to a new type of documents um, very uh, easily. That's what transfer learning is, and that's uh, what we think is the biggest um, innovation from uh, from the Transformers uh, architectures. And from that initial introduction, you know, the, the pace of progress uh, has been uh, amazing, and so uh, we've been uh, extremely lucky to find ourselves at the center um, of that uh, motion, where the global um, AI scientific community has been building upon each other's work uh, with uh, our open source library, uh, Hugging Face Transformers, being the, the vehicle to distribute all these latest models. So I'm referring here to uh, the classic uh, task of text classification, where within a year of the introduction of the um, uh, Seminole BERT uh, model, uh, computers were able to do this task better than humans. And same was true for question answering, another classic NLP task, where the progress uh, was actually so fast that Stanford had to upgrade a, a squad, the squad 1.1 benchmark to squad 2.0, which was again overcome in the course of months by the scientific uh, community. Um, so how all this technology is used uh, today uh, so if we're thinking about NLP specifically, you know, text classification uh, enables companies to automate, uh, for instance, their customer support um, so that you know that this message is about uh, uh, unhappy clients, it's high priority, it's about the credit cards department, so you're going to write it the right way. Uh, it's used for information extraction when you are asking questions in natural uh, language to a search engine like uh, Bing today. Uh, or to another uh, sort of search um, experience, um, the model is able to surface the information that is relevant um, and to formulate it uh, in natural language. Also, text um, uh, NLP uh, used to uh, create uh, analysis um, uh, in an automated manner, which is used uh, a lot uh, in the financial industry and many other industries. Of course, chatbots uh, is also a huge area where Transformers um, is having a lot of impact. So NLP, going back to Hugging Face, uh, our mission is to democratize NLP. Or at least that's what I've been saying until a few months ago, uh, and I have to update this a little bit. Really, our mission is to democratize machine learning uh, and why? because Transformers um, has, is uh, eating the world uh, of machine learning, um, is now the standard to get uh, the best possible accuracy and performance in NLP, uh, but it is starting to bleed away into other modalities. And today, 
uh, we've introduced uh, new models uh, with state-of-the-art results uh, for speech and also more recently for vision with the last two releases uh, of the Transformers library uh, uh, being focused around vision models. All right, so behind all of this uh, is a graph that I like to show when I talk about our mission of democratization. What it represents is uh, the introduction of new language models in the period following the introduction of BERT, um, with the y-axis being the number of parameters of those models, so the size of those models. And what you can see is that even early on, and that is pre-introduction of GPT-3 by OpenAI, um, we could already see this exponential curve um, of um, the increase of the size of language models. And that, to us, is... Um, uh, a bit concerning for, for a couple of reasons. The first is that uh, these large language models create uh, engineering challenges uh, for machine learning engineers all over the world. Um, and, um, and so that's an obstacle to our mission of democratization. The other thing is that um, as the resources to pre-train those models uh, become more and more important, you see and away the contribution to the field of um, the public research labs and universities as it really takes uh, starts taking millions to tens of millions of dollars to train uh, these ever larger models. So to democratize machine learning, uh, we're really relying on two main pillars. Uh, the first being community. Um, I've spoken about uh, Hugging Face being the distribution vehicle for uh, science uh, across, um, across the AI, AI community. And the other is efficiency. Um, so trying to make those models more efficient so they use less energy, so they run faster, so they can be used uh, by more and more uh, companies. In terms of community, uh, we are over 55 today uh, at Hugging Face, but we re really rep represent a much larger community, over a thousand uh, open source contributors today um, that bring the latest science um, um, and make it available uh, to companies around the world. Um, we offer over 10,000 state-of-the-art models available for free publicly. Uh, through our libraries, through our model hub, uh, which I'll demo a, a, in a second. And then another important aspect for us um, is uh, languages. And um, to make uh, really uh, the state of the art accessible uh, to as many people as possible, it's super important that uh, we make those models uh, available uh, in as many languages as possible. Historically, NLP has been very um, weighted uh, weighed uh, around English due to the uh, pre-training data. Um, and so we're very lucky to uh, have a strong community of users all across all across the world uh, that work hard to make all those models available in every single language around the world. This uh, The result of this focus on community uh, has been fueling uh, uh, the growth uh, of, uh, of our open source. So here I'm uh, putting on the graph uh, the GitHub star metric um, for um, uh, the Transformers library in red and other uh, super awesome open source projects. And you can see that uh, the pace um, of adoption of the library uh, has been really breathtaking and we're super happy um, and lucky uh, to be at the center of this. So now uh, with all this uh, context, um, I'd love to show you in practice uh, what it means for a Hugging Face user uh, to try to solve a new, um, a new NLP problem. So I'm going to head over to, um, to my browser. Uh, this is the, the home page um, of Hugging Face, uh, the AI community building the future. Uh, one of the main attractions uh, for uh, users of our open source um, and data scientists and machine learning engineers um, is our repository of uh, models with over 12,000 uh, public free models uh, available uh, to, to explore and, and uh, solve problems. The best way to navigate 
uh, models is through the filters uh, that you can see here on the left, starting with the going to be targeting the tasks that the, the models you're looking for will have been fine-tuned on. Fine-tuning being the process of transfer learning, which I explained at the beginning. You can also filter uh, those models by libraries. You can filter those models by the data sets that they were trained on, as well as the languages uh, that you are looking for. Um, let me start with an easy one. I'm looking at text classification models, and, and I'm going to pick the first one. The first one is Distal Bird, um, a fine tune and SST2 in English. Distal Bird is an architecture that was um, unveiled uh, by the Hugging Face uh, science uh, team uh, and is now um, one of the uh, two most popular models uh, on the model hub. So um, for every single model uh, on the on Hugging Face, uh, you have this very cool feature with a hosted API that allows you to just try the model right from the page. So here with this, uh, we have some text as input. Uh, we um, serve the model and we get the result, which is 100% positive sentiment uh, on uh, that piece of text. Uh, so here the model has been uh, fine-tuned to, um, to produce a sentiment classification, binary classifications, either negative or positive. Um, but let me show you a different type of classification uh, that is uh, really, really cool and works really well. I explained the process um, of uh, transfer learning. The fact that you can take a pre-trained model and very efficiently through additional uh, label data uh, or unstructured data, um, fine tune that model so that it can be adapted to a new task. Well, what if um, you, you couldn't? Uh, what if you couldn't uh, do this process of fine tuning and you want to ask the model to do this task of classification based on classes that you will be submitting at inference. That's why it's called zero shot. It means that you're not fine tuning uh, the, the, the model for these particular classes. So here the input text is, I have a problem with my iPhone that needs to be resolved ASAP. And so I'm going to ask the model, is this urgent? Is this not urgent? Is it about a phone? Is it about a tablet or is it about a computer? And so the, mo the model will tell me that it's 80% uh, about a phone, 13% about a computer, and, um, and uh, you can read the rest. Uh, what's really interesting here is that if you change um, any of those uh, classes, um, like uh, change to PC and rerun the model, then you're going to get a uh, new, uh, uh, new result. Okay, now let me demo, and still in the realm of NLP, uh, and I'm saying still in the realm of NLP because you can find uh, many, many models around speech recognition, around speech um, audio separation, but also for uh, computer vision in image classification, segmentation, et cetera. So still in the uh, realm of NLP, uh, let me show you a summarization model. Uh, because summarization um, is um, um, so a task that has really um, been uh, imp uh, improved uh, recently in terms of, of its performance. So let's do an exercise where I'm going to go to the uh, front page of the New York Times. I'm going to pick the first uh, article. And from that first article, if it loads, um, I'm going to pick the first paragraph, or maybe the first couple paragraphs and send that over to my model as input. Um, and let's see what we get. All right, so within uh, 2.5 seconds, the model was able to uh, uh, summarize these two paragraphs into the following. The most contagious version of the coronavirus accounts for more than half of new infections in the United States. The spread of the Delta variant has prompted a vigorous new vaccination push from the Biden administration. Federal officials are planning to send medical teams to communities facing outbreaks that now seem inevitable. Um, I actually read that article and I can tell you that it's a pretty good summary. 
Um, so yes, whether it's classification, whether it's summarization, whether it's text generation, um, there are hundreds or thousands of models available in any single language that you may be looking for. But now, what, what if I want to uh, take this model and uh, fine tune it to my own um, type of documents? Maybe I'm working on financial documents, maybe I'm working on legal documents, and I want a summarization model that works great with that. And that's where I want to uh, bring your attention to these uh, cool um, little buttons, which allow you to take this model and use it within your own code. Uh, and here for training, uh, we have uh, an option uh, for users to get very easily um, a code snippet to, um, to import into their own um, environment um, so that they can leverage uh, the, the joint solution that we built with the SageMaker team. Uh, so you can use that model and train it uh, within SageMaker. Similarly, if you want to deploy that model into a secure endpoint that has all the scalability and built-in features that SageMaker provides, we have a two-click option for you uh, to select your configuration again and uh, grab uh, the snippet. So that's uh, one of the um, one of the ten pull features uh, of our partnership uh, with um, with uh, AWS. Um, you can pick any of the twelve thousand uh, public state of the art models on the hub, and uh, and go ahead and fine tune them, train them, deploy them all in SageMaker. Uh, leveraging uh, these ready-to-use snippets of code. So I'm going to stop talking uh, now um, and to walk you through. Um, I'm going to stop sharing too. <laughs> that was a little Inception-esque. Um, I'm going to hand it over to uh, to my colleague Philip, uh, who is the brains uh, behind uh, this uh, this amazing integration, uh, to walk you through a few uh, a few examples. So be before we, we hand it off to Philip, uh, there was a question here. As you're talking about all the models that are available on Hug Me Face, sort of this idea of, you know, with, with ML and NLP all in general being such a cutting edge technology or, or industry, you know, there's huge amounts of architectures that come out, you know, mostly from the research. So, uh, at Hugging Face, with, with the relatively smaller workforce, how do you kind of determine which architecture do you want to implement? And I guess as a follow-up to that question from the audience, actually, how important is open source contribution to that, to that part of Transformers library? So the, it's a two-part question there. Yeah, I think the, the two parts of this question speak uh, to uh, two parts uh, of Hugging Face. Um, we're, uh, we're lucky to have an amazing uh, science team uh, within Hugging Face that pioneered um, uh, many of um, the state-of-the-art uh, model architectures, but also um, uh, model efficiency uh, compression uh, techniques. Um, and so we, uh, in addition to our open source, uh, we also um, have contributions um, toward our mission, our mission of democratizing state-of-the-art machine learning through uh, our uh, science team. Um, and uh, we could talk, for instance, about uh, this amazing project called uh, Big Science, um, of which Hugging Face uh, is uh, a part, um, where over 500 uh, leading uh, scientists in the field are coming together uh, to work together uh, to build uh, new um, new uh, artifacts uh, for for the community. By artifact, I mean a very large language model uh, and data set. Um, and so, yes, our focus on the community uh, makes it so that we are able to distribute um, the um, the latest uh, the latest science and implement them within uh, our open source so that as many researchers, as many data scientists, as many machine learning engineers 
um, can take those contributions, those scientific contributions, and actually make use of the use of it uh, right away. So it's not, um, um, you know, machine learning. Yes, um, is is cutting edge, but within machine learning, transformers is the bleeding edge, and transformers the library uh, is how that um, that latest science makes makes it very quickly uh, within days or weeks from the paper uh, onto actual uh, data scientists notebooks um, and uh, and production workflows um, and so yes um, it's uh, it's a very important uh, part uh, of uh, of our science contributions it's also a very important part uh, if not the core of our open source uh, contribution Sounds good. Uh, appreciate the answer. And just as a as a note, I've shared the link to Big Science. So, in the audience, if you're interested more in that aspect of how the community is coming together, take a look. I I think you'll find it very interesting. So. And uh, yeah, and uh, big up and big thanks to uh, uh, everybody around uh, the world um who, uh, who is gracious enough to make contributions to our open source to make contributions to uh, our model hub we regularly host uh, community events uh, where uh, hundreds uh, of uh, volunteers come and join us uh, to work with us uh, and make um, state-of-the-art available to as many people as possible i remember the wave to to wave two community sprint uh, where we had over 300 people come in and uh, fine-tune uh, these speech recognition models uh, in, uh, I think, over 150 uh, languages. So really, really important impact that makes a difference uh, all over the world. Sounds good. And before Philip starts, uh, sorry, Philip, for holding you back a few more minutes. I uh, just want to recap uh, for the audience that are joining right now. And for everyone else, we're here at a Howdy Partner episode for Hugging Face. Uh, Olivia and Jeff sort of led the way with, you know, how SageMaker works and some of the work we have already done with Hugging Face. And Jeff just showed us uh, how to use Hugging Face on its platform, HuggingFace.co, of the different models that you can kind of test out. And once once you want to kind of tinker with the, the model itself, there is a there's an option to you know available for you to train and deploy with the click of a button to SageMaker it gives you a little snippet code that you can kind of take and, and start playing around with it on SageMaker. So with that said, uh, I will pass it off to Philip. Thanks. Um, I guess I hope you can see my screen already. And um, yeah, there's also a dark mode. So seen by Jeff, we have a light mode. If you have an account, what I highly recommend, you can go to settings and select your dark mode. And um, I would start with um, basically using one of the new features we added. So last week, um, we announced um, the new inference DLC we built together with um, AWS, which also include a new inference toolkit. And the inference toolkit is basically an orchestrator um, used to deploy your models, manage them, and run the inference code. And we have like integrated the Hugging Face Hub into this inference toolkit, so you be, are able to deploy like any of these models you see here to SageMaker without like any writing any Python code yourself. And um, I would go with uh, a question answering model. And Jeff has already shared the, the deploy button. I can select the Amazon SageMaker select that I, uh, the configuration where I want to deploy. So I can deploy inside AWS, meaning uh, when running inside a SageMaker notebook or inside SageMaker Studio, or when I want to run it or deploy my endpoint from a local machine. There's also a snippet where I just need to adjust like the IAM permission role for my local credentials. But I go with, with AWS and copy the snippet. I have started already a SageMaker notebook instance where we can create a new notebook, selecting the PyTorch kernel. And the first thing we currently need to do is to upgrade the SageMaker SDK since it's like 
a pretty new release and the notebook instances haven't been like updated like the base version of it that being said i can copy my my snippet and i can execute it and then i will go through it so basically what it is doing, we are getting our um, IAM permission with SageMaker get execution role. A quick note, this method is only available when running in SageMaker notebook instances or in SageMaker Studio. Then we have our Hugging Face Hub configuration, including our model ID. That's what we see on our model page and then the task. So each model or fine-tuned model has always an ID and a task. We have our Hugging Face model um, class from the Python SDK, where we can select our Transformers version, then the, the base version of our framework. In this case, it's PyTorch, our Python version. Then we uh, provide our um, Hugging Face Hub configuration. This like um, variables or dictionary will be um, set as environment variables when starting the endpoint. And that's how the inference tool can know which model it needs to load. And then we run our um, yeah, dot deploy method with an initial instance count of one in this case and um, our instance type. And for this, I used a uh, CPU based image um, with the M5 instance. And after it's deployed, it automatically also runs one prediction. And what's super uh, cool about it is it's, we have like predefined inputs for all tasks. So if you select the model from the hub, you can see we have um, um, a, um, a widget which Jeff has showed. And we also provide um, a widget or a, an input example for you in the deploy mechanism. So you can see, okay, how can I use the model and like don't need to figure out, okay, what's the correct input in the beginning. But that being said, um, SageMaker endpoint deployment takes around five to 10 minutes. So we can use this five to 10 minutes to show you, okay, uh, it's nice that I can deploy my models, but um, how does it look to, to train my models? For example, if I want to train my own question answering model on a different data set. Um, I can again then um, go to the model hub and select one of the pre-trained models. For example, if I want to have a third base uncased trained on question answering, I can go to the model page, Click on train, select Amazon SageMaker, can select my task again with question answering and where I want to like start a training job. Again, here I can select AWS or local machine with the same configuration, AWS meaning, okay, I'm starting my training top job inside Amazon, like SageMaker notebook or um, the IDE. And then I can copy it and um, go to a notebook, uh, go to a notebook, paste it and run it. And this snippet won't run out of the box as the deployment script because it's like just providing you the base boilerplate code you need to run your script. That's meaning we have a, a training script for the task, in this case, question answering, but we are not providing the hyperparameters for your model. So we are not saying, okay, this model is going to be trained for three epochs on batch size eight. Because if, for example, if you want to train your model on a bigger machine or for distributed training, like we cannot say before running your job what you want to do. So here's like place to fill out, but we are providing examples and all the configuration with the link here and also what's missing the data. So like we cannot run the training without any data. And that's like where you can chime in, provide your data set as an S3 UI um, with hyperparameters here. And then that, that's basically it. But we don't have like um, only these two buttons. We have also um, now 11 different um, examples for how to train um, Hugging Face models on SageMaker, either with PyTorch, TensorFlow, if you want to do a distributed training with data parallelism, meaning you're running like um, a large training job on multiple different nodes where splitting up the data or if you want to do model parallelism, for example, if you want to train a large language model, which doesn't even fit on one GPU because it's that big, you, then you can go with model parallelism. We can use spot instances as Olivier has described in the beginning to save up money. Um, SageMaker also offers metrics, which um, is here showcase how I can extract like training metri metrics you do, or you do have in, in TensorBoard or maybe in weights and bias, it's kind of the same, but uh, SageMaker metrics will be saved into the SageMaker platform. So it's super easy to manage your data science experiments. 
We have an example for TensorFlow distributed training. And uh, the same goes for the new popular summarization task where you have like an end-to-end -end example training uh, a BART model or a T5 model on a summarization task and then uploading it to the hub at the end. We also have now an, an example for image classification using the new vision transformer. And the two newest and latest uh, notebooks are completely dedicated to deploying your model to um, SageMaker endpoints for inference. That's the one example where you deploy an already pre-trained model from S3 when you have like one of these um, nine examples. Um, you can deploy it from S3 to SageMaker or what we have already started is deploy a model from the hub to SageMaker when you like have an, some compliance regulation and you need uh, your model to be run in, inside a VPC without any internet um, gateways, you can use this example, load a model from the hub, start your endpoint, and then you're good to go. And looking back, our model hopefully will be soon deployed. I think, uh, Yang, do you have like any questions? I think it yeah. doesn't take that there, long anymore. Yeah, so there is another question. I think that was sort of following the previous question um, of sort of, looking at architectures and how do you implement or, you know, how do you prioritize it? Similar, similar vein, but, you know, how do you deal with completely new architectures or, or paradigms that might be gaining prominence within NLP, but that doesn't exactly fit in the current template of your template of your code base? So when speaking from completely new architectures, I'm still expecting the architecture to be any transformer based architectures. It's not a problem at all. So currently we have, or you, all of you can take a look at a repository at GitHub. Um, each model architecture has its own completely dedicated code. So there's a code base for the BERT model, for Albert and Roberta, for GPT-2, GPT-Normal, for all like the different uh, new vision model with vision transformers. So each new architecture becomes like a new dedicated space inside the open source repository with all of its code and it needed. So for example, all the NLP model we had previously um, need a tokenizer for pre and post processing and the new image transformers need like a processor to process the, the image as like a PNG into a matrix the transformer model can understand. So that that's the way how we we add new models, we rather like duplicate code instead of building some complex structure, which no one can maintain anymore. And that being said, we can see our endpoint got deployed and we got the answer for our predefined input. And I think we can um, copy it to a new cell since it's deployed and rather ask, okay, not What's the name of Clara? Maybe um, where does Clara live? And then we get a result with the answer of Berkeley. Berkeley, I guess it's somewhere in New York. And after you are done testing um, or working with your endpoint, you also can run predictor.delete endpoint, which will clean up everything on SageMaker and you can deploy a new model. Um, yeah, that's for that. Really cool. So again, like 12,000 models uh, available on Hugging Face. On um, each of those models, there's a model page where you can see what the model does. And on that page, there is a code snippet uh, for you to deploy your own endpoint within your own environment in SageMaker. Um, so you can use that model directly uh, with all the enterprise compliance and uh, great features that, uh, that SageMaker provides. Yeah, so for example, if we want to do the same test, Jeff has done um, a minute ago with the the New York Times article, we can go to the model page, select our model, go back to our notebook instance, paste the code snippet, run it again, and we'll take like five to 10 minutes again. And then we should see like the summarization of this model. 
So it's it's super easy to deploy any of these models when you like tested them on the hub and have a good feeling, okay, that's the model I can use for my proof of concept or for my MVP, for my customer to show something up, or um, maybe they have some yeah um, constraints about, okay, we cannot like go to a public page and run it there. Can we like do some batch inference on our machines? Then it's the, that's the way to go. And it's like super straightforward and you don't need like any knowledge with transformers or hugging face libraries at all. So I have a question actually. So when when you decide to train with your own data, are the da is the data coming from S3? Well, what kind of format is it taking? So um, the data can come from S3. So you're pretty flexible. What Olivier has also described is when you, wait, let me go into an example that I can show you. Um, when you use the Python SageMaker SDK, you have the option when creating creating a training job that you can pass in an S3 URI which um, points to a data set. So here you can see I would run estimator.fit which executes my training job on the SageMaker platform starting the EC2 instance and I provide additional information. In this case, it's a dictionary of with train and test and train input path and test input path are S3 URIs to like a CSV or a JSON or an arrow file on S3, which will be downloaded on startup to the um, EC2 machine. And then when you have like a Python script, um, you can work with it as it is on your local machine. So you can test it, you test your Python script on your local machine. If it's load the, the, the CSV from the specific path, and then you can like easily run it on, on the SageMaker platform doing the same, but the data is provided from S3. Makes sense. Yeah, no, I mean, definitely, I can definitely see uh, at least myself at least uh, kind of dabbling into this is something of a, I guess, a little bit of pain, at least personally, just kind of learning how to use hugging phase and then, you know, making that transition into, into SageMaker. Now it's just basically one click and copy and paste and off you go. So made it very easy for us. Um, with that said, um, let me see if any audience, anyone in the audience have any other questions, uh, keep them coming in the chat. We're here at uh, Howdy Partner with another episode with Hugging Face. Philip just showed us how easy it is to uh, kind of take what Jeff was presenting earlier on Hugging Face, you know, where you're looking at different models and you're able to deploy or train those models with one click off onto SageMaker. And Philip was just showing how that's done on SageMaker Notebook by just copying over, you know, it, it has the components that you need, things like ex execution roles within SageMaker, the actual model class, as you can see in the display here, you know, when you deploy, you know, what type of instance you want, everything that you would need to get things rolling uh, and deployed and, and tested even on the bottom as, as the predict shows. Everything that gets packaged as a, as a snippet, code snippet, and all you have to do is take it up to your notebook and just run the code. So with that said, uh, let's see if the audience has any more questions. Uh, in the meantime, and as this is also running to kind of show the the text slash a, a news article model. How can users get started? You know, what what is the most appropriate way for somebody who's maybe not as a, as of an expert in hugging face or NLP in general to kind of get their feet wet? And you know, not not even getting into the SageMaker part. Obviously, it's a great tool to use and great tool to have. But how could they get started? So we. Recently, I think last month, um, shared, announced, and created a new course, um, which you can find on huggingface.co slash course, which is completely oriented 
about the transformers library data sets and tokenizers and gives you a complete introduction into what is natural language processing what transformers can do what are the encoder and decoder models uh, sequence to sequence model basically it's all the needs and creeds you need to do a state-of-the-art nlp and it's completely free and it's um, available for pytorch and tensorflow so if you are not familiar with pytorch um, you can easily select on each um, chapter of the course either tensorflow or pytorch and then the model uh, the video will change and the code sn sn snippet will change so if we go to for example if we have done set up um, transformer models and using hugging face transformers and we are fine-tuning a pre-trained model um, we can go with processing data and here we can see okay how you can get started with a simple bird model and what tokenization is doing and if i'm not familiar with torch or my company is not using pytorch i can switch to tensorflow and you have the same exact code for tensorflow and how to do it Sounds good. And obviously, when it comes to um, you know using the model, some of the notebooks samples you've seen uh, Philip go through. I think there were eleven of them. I'll just display it again on our screen. That's where you can get the the notebook samples. Uh, take a look at it yourselves uh, if you're interested in uh, trying any of those models. That's where they are. And then I guess something that you brought up uh, since we are here, and uh, this is some somewhat of a curious question of mine, is as you're looking through, and I don't know if this is visible on your side, but are more people using PyTorch or TensorFlow when it comes to Hugging Face? Because, you know, that's always, always a, a great argument there. I think, like, there's a... A strong community behind PyTorch, I would say, um, slightly dominating. But um, TensorFlow is, um, yeah, it's catching up. I would say we have done, a, or we are doing a lot of work with TensorFlow, and PyTorch and TensorFlow aren't the only players we have in in times of base framework. We also um, have pull chucks or flux support, rather saying, it's like the the new uh, deep learning library. Uh, out there so as Jeff has showed you can go to to models and there you can see all the different libraries and which models or which models are available in which library and then uh, for transformers it's PyTorch, TensorFlow and Chux. Yeah I'm gonna have to definitely check out Jax because that's somewhat of a uncharted territory for me and I think it might be for a lot of people out there so that's a good reminder to kind of check those things out but with that said, uh, any other resources you could share? Uh, yeah, definitely what I could recommend is um, if you are interested in, in, in trying out Hugging Face on SageMaker, we created a complete new documentation on huggingface.co slash doc slash SageMaker, which is um, has a main section with the, you have all the, the resources available with blog posts, videos, documentation, and then you have like two dedicated sections to running training on Amazon SageMaker with an end-to-end -end examples, with exactly what steps you need to go through, with um, additional features explaining how to do distributed training, which is super easy. You basically just need to provide the configuration for the um, SageMaker SDK that you want to do distributed training, and that's basically it. Um, the same goes for, for deploying models. What we went through is documented here. And if you still have questions, we have like a broad variety of frequently asked questions for, um, yeah, previously heard questions from customer or from the community. And if you still have questions or unanswered questions, you can go to our community forum um, under discuss.hugginface.co where we have a dedicated space for Amazon SageMaker, where you can ask any question you have about Hugging Face on AWS, on SageMaker, or just general questions about um, what's coming up next or and what issues you run in. Sounds and then great. There's an Go Sorry, ahead. Young. Uh, yeah, I was going to say there's another sort of uh, face to that coin, um, which is in addition to all the great resources that uh, we make available. 
Um, like something that we found is really um, helpful for companies to navigate uh, all these different models and architectures that um, come with new models uh, every week um, is to uh, get basically our premium support. So we can guide them as they're trying to solve problems on like, which is the best um, the best uh, uh, pre-trained model uh, for them? Um, what sort of tasks can they target with the data that they have? How much data do they need to fine tune a model to get uh, the accuracy that they're targeting? And then all the production questions that uh, go along uh, with those models. Um, and uh, specifically, as we've uh, partnered with uh, AWS to um, bring this, uh, new integrated solutions within SageMaker, we had the opportunity to um, have um, uh, discussions uh, with uh, both the end customer, the SageMaker customer, and the SageMaker team. And it was pretty, uh, pretty clear in those conversations that being able to guide uh, companies uh, in their journey uh, of adopting uh, transformers um, through you know, one problem to the next um, is actually the best way that, that we can accelerate them. That's why we call this thing uh, the expert acceleration program. Um, so yeah, there's like one part is education and another part is uh, our, our premium support. One thing uh, I wanted to, to emphasize as well, especially looking at the, the demo from Philip, I don't know if you noticed, but uh, he actually deployed a the model, uh, the first one to uh, an M5, a small M5 CPU instance. And this is pretty impressive. It highlights that, you know, uh, even though this is state of the art deep learning uh, with millions of parameters, uh, it runs in real time on CPU. And uh, what I want to, to emphasize is that um, Hugging Face uh, made, you know, deep learning and state of the art NLP um, much more accessible. And when you pair that with the AWS Cloud, with SageMaker, you, you get real cost efficiency. And uh, you, you could have state-of-the-art models running you know, on, on cost-effective endpoints, uh, beyond this example on CPU. Uh, at the other extreme, you have you know, hardware specialization with Inferentia, for example. And we will share in the link you know, a blog post to a recent benchmark our Inferentia uh, team did. And um, using um, the Inferentia compiler and the specialized hardware, they were able to run a, a, a hugging face bird transformer at uh, 10 cent per million inference. So really uh, uh, impressive achievement. Uh, but also the, without you know, talking about a specific service, the, the whole concept of transfer learning, even though you know, it's GPU training, it's, it's, it's long task, you can actually make big cost synergies within an organization because instead of having you know, 10, 20 teams training their own models, uh, as Jeff highlighted, you could uh, train big backbones and, and just share that across teams. And now projects can be more label efficient, can uh, get faster time to result with less compute, uh, compute uh, consumption. So uh, whether we talk about training uh, organization-wide or real-time inference, this is really accessible. And, and Hugging Face and, and AWS, we really do our best to make it more and more accessible. And, uh, and a lot of those efforts, they come, you know, from, from you. Uh, whether it is community contribution or question that you ask on the Hugging Face side, uh, Hugging Face side, or also uh, customer feedback that AWS receives, this really drives our roadmap. We often say 90% of our product, they come from customer interaction. Uh, and I'm sure, you know, uh, for open source, it's almost and much or even more. Um, so so re we, we really need to, to, to keep you know, that contact and to, to, to receive those inputs from you. So whether it is you know, today in the question chat or even tomorrow and later via GitHub issues, forum uh, tickets, or, or even uh, emails to, uh, to your account team, don't hesitate to, to stay in touch, to talk about your frictions, your challenges, your goals. Uh, and we will make you know, those, uh, those services um, better and better. Yeah, I think at the end of the day, whether it's customers or community, it's, it, that's what really drives you know, adoption and and this move into making things, you know, better, faster, cheaper, and just overall better. So I think that's well said. So in the audience, I don't think we have any more questions. So kind of 
doing a doing a wrap up here uh, as as sort of a call to action for everyone that's watching today. Uh, if you're a community member already contributing to Hugging Face, please continue to do so. Uh, if you are somebody who's who's uh, just watching as a casual enthusiast, uh, practitioner, or somebody like me who just likes to tinker with ML and kind of practice and, and upscale my level or, or your level, uh, take a look at what we what we presented today. Um, I think there was really a lot of good things that came out of this, uh, all the models that you can access in Hugging Face and making it easy for you to deploy on SageMaker and, and run a really quick script to, to get everything working and, and kind of seeing the results there and being able to deploy on, on secured endpoints and things like that. And if you're enterprise, as you can see here, uh, consider consider contacting Hugging Face to see if you if you can kind of accelerate your roadmap into into NLP. So with that said, if there's any not any more questions, uh, I mean I think that's it. Uh, thank you, Philip, Jeff, Olivier, for joining me today. Uh, we had a really great session here with Hugging Face, and hopefully everybody took a, a thing or two away from from the session today. Um, before we end things, uh, as it is a tradition at Howdy Partner, we usually have a a parting saying, I guess, phrase, um, and and you can have your choice of one of three. Uh, and this is sort of a, a Howdy Partner themed uh, signing off uh, phrases. They are giddy up, so that's your choice number one. Happy trails. And the last one is see y'all next time. So th thank see which one next is your time. <laughs> All right. Any any objections there? Uh, if not, uh, on the count of three, we will say see y'all next time and sign off. See y'all next time. Uh, you jumped the gun there a little bit. So, uh, <laughs> let's, uh, let's, <laughs> let's go three, two, one. See you all next time. Thank you, everyone. And we'll see you again this time next week at 2 p.m. Thank you. Bye, Mike. Awesome. Thanks. Bye.